Good evening on behalf of the World Jewish Congress and my co-chairs. David de Rothschild and Shella Safra, I want to welcome you all here tonight. Considering everything that's happened in the last 24 hours, I have to say one thing. The United States is the most extraordinary country. <laughs> in many ways. Because once again, we have seen over the past 240 years, there hopefully will be a peaceful transfer of power. And that is indeed extraordinary. We want our president, we want every president to succeed. And we wish President-elect Trump all the best. Tonight, we celebrate two individuals that have made a huge difference in our world, who not only dreamed big things, but have the rare ability of turning dreams into reality. That is, after all, the night the World Jewish Congress gives out the Theodor Herzl Award, the highest award in the Jewish world. If it isn't, don't tell anybody. <laughs> Can you imagine one individual who had a greater impact on the Jewish people and the entire world than Theodor Herzl. In 1897, Herzl understood that the good life that Jews were forced to live in places like Vienna and Berlin and Budapest would not last. Herzl knew that the only way Jews could ever be safe was to no longer depend on other people and governments for their safety, and the Jewish people had to take charge. They had to take control of their own desk in their own land, protected by their own army. So Herzl stood on a balcony in, in, in Basel and said to the world, 2,000 years is long enough. It's time for the Jewish people to return to their eternal homeland. It's one thing to have a vision, but to have a, a vision Unless you can turn your dreams into reality, there are still only dreams. Herzl had the unique ability to turn this dream into a living, breathing democracy. That is how, 60, 67 years young, that country has amazed the world with its achievements. Tonight is also the anniversary of Kristallnacht, and, it is, and this is significant. On November 9th, 1938, Adolf Hitler unleashed his fury on the German and Austrian communities, destroying Jewish businesses, ransacking homes, killing Jews in the streets, and burning down 1,000 synagogues. But it was the real reaction, or the lack of reaction, that had the most damning impact. World leaders did practically nothing. When Hitler saw that nobody really cared what he did to the Jews in his country, he knew he had a free hand to continue everywhere else. Kristallnacht led to world silence, and world silence led to the Holocaust. Although we, we still face challenges 80 years later, I want to give you a quick assessment of where we are as a people. And the news is good. Finally, get good news. <laughs> Former foes like Saudi Arabia and some of the Gulf states have reached out to Israel. Countries from China to Russia to India and many countries represented here tonight have increased respect for Israel. Early this year, I was a guest speaker at the 500th anniversary of the creation of the Venice Ghetto. That was the first time Jews were forced into a tiny, overcrowded area. And that's where the word, word ghetto comes from. But within no time, the Venice ghetto, ghetto became one of the largest publishers of books in Europe. Outside populations came to the ghetto to see Jewish doctors. Jews might have been contained, but they never stopped thinking. That is the lesson from Venice. 
over 500 years ago. But today, Jews make life better for everyone, not for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> With their advancements in science, literature, music, and arts, we are less than 1% of the world's population, but we make up more than 20% of the Nobel laureates, and the entire world benefits from this. So, So in the face of our present day challenges, this is what the World Jewish Congress is doing. We continue to protect Jewish communities around the world by going directly to the leaders and explaining why it's in their interest to make sure that the Jews in their country are safe. We never stop working and we stop trying to stop anti-Semitic and anti-Israel sentiment. We are training the young Jewish leaders of tomorrow and we are sending security specialists around the world to train our most vulnerable populations and teach them how to protect themselves. I sometimes wonder what would have happened if we had a strong World Jewish Congress in 1936, or after Kristallnacht in 1938. World history might have been different. This is one of the big what ifs. But this is what we do know. We have a strong World Jewish Congress today, a strong Israel, and a united Jewish people. I will end my thoughts with the World Jewish Congress's six principles. First, we are one Jewish people, from the most orthodox to the most secular, from the most conservative to the most liberal, and we are strongest when we stand together as one people. Second, we can never be silent because we learn the consequences of silence. Third, anti-Semitism and anti-Israel sentiments are one and the same, and they must end. Fourth, no Jewish child should ever have again to walk in fear. Fifth, we must call for a viable two-state solution to protect Israel and the Jewish people as resolved the only between two parties. And finally, number six, all of us owe peace to the next generation. We are united, and we choose the power to heal over the call to hate. Tonight, I want to take a moment to remember two giants of the Jewish world who are also Herzl Award recipients. Elie Wiesel and Shimon Peres. They left us this year, over this past year. Elie Wiesel survived the Holocaust, become one of the most articulate witnesses to humans' greatest crime. He was the world's moral compass. So, and 30 years ago, I traveled to Auschwitz with Elie and saw the camp and experienced it as never before. That visit changed everything for me. What always amazed me about Eli was that he left that terrible place very sad, but he was never hateful or vengeful. He inspired all of us to raise our voice against hatred, injustice, and evil, not only for Jews, but for the entire world, for all people, and for all religions. Eli said something to me once that I'll never forget. He said, the opposite of love isn't hate, it's indifference. It is what led the world to sit idly by when anti-Semitism in Germany marched on. Silence and indifference made the Holocaust possible. And because of that, we will never be silent again. Shimon Peres was the last great founding father of Israel. When we established the Theodor Herzl Award in 2012, we were so proud that then President Peres was our first recipient. Through his final days, Shimon Peres was the living embodiment of Theodor Herzl's Zionist dream. He was a tireless champion of Israel, a beacon of light and hope to all humanity.
Shimon Peres was the quintessential Israeli, a pragmatist wrapped up in a cloak of eternal optimism. It was his greatest wish, as it was, that Israel exist in peace and security, assuming its rightful place in the family of democratic nations. That was the optimist in Shimon, whose son, Hemi Peres, is with us here tonight. Please, Hemi, stand up and let us move. He just got through security. <laughs> like Herzl, Elie Wiesel, Elie Wiesel had a, and Shimon Peres had vision, had strength, and they had courage. They represented our very best. We have here UN ambassadors from 25 different countries with us tonight. I'd like to thank each of you. I'd like to thank all of you and for being here and being friends with the Jewish people and for your presence here tonight. I know it can be challenging at times to be on Israel's side in the United Nations. That's a lot. But the Jewish people appreciate your efforts. On Israel's behalf, then we are grateful. I would like all of you to please stand and receive our applause and our thanks tonight. All the best.